How's it going, guys? I hope you guys have a great week. So it is that time in the month again, guys. It is time to talk about some of the biggest games coming out this month. So without further ado, here are eight of the biggest games coming out in August 2022. Kicking off first this month is Two Point Campus. This is developed by Two Point Studios, and it is an upcoming business simulation game and a successor to Two Point Hospital. It actually tasks the player with building and managing a university campus. You have to build classrooms, lecture halls and libraries, as well as organizing different cultural events and extracurricular activities. The player will also need to appoint staff such as lecturers, teaching assistants and janitors. In addition to maintaining the operation of the campus, you will also need to take care of the well-being of the students. Each student has their own specific needs and players will need to get to know their students, explore their individual personalities wants and needs. You will ultimately need to keep them happy with club activities, societies and gigs, surround them with friends and help them develop relationships. Through your choices and actions, they will either succeed, fail or drop out of school, depending on how they are guided during their time in the campus. Uh, Two Point Campus is set for release on the 9th of August and it is available across all of the consoles, but it will actually be coming to the Game Pass at day one. So if you enjoyed uh, Two point hospital or you really like these kind of business simulation games um, then I think this is going to be right up your alley and uh, yeah it's coming out early this month the second release this month is Cult of the Lamb this is an upcoming roguelike action adventure game with settlement management elements developed by Massive Monster and published by Devolver Digital it is easily one of my most anticipated indie titles to come out this year Cult of the Lamb actually cast players in the role of a possessed lamb save from death by an ominous stranger who you must repay by building your own cult in a land of false prophets. The game loop revolves around venturing into various regions in order to grow your following and ultimately become the one true cult. While adventuring through the randomly generated worlds, you will come across other animals which you can recruit into your cult and you can assign your followers certain tasks once they are indoctrinated, such as chopping wood, mining stone or worshipping you. The resources that they gather help you to create new structures for your cult's base and their worshipping allows you to upgrade your abilities. You must keep your cultists happy by providing them with food, shelter and maintaining the cleanliness of your cult so that they don't get sick. While doing this, you must also maintain your cult's base and you are also tasked with destroying any non-believers that are spread throughout the randomly generated worlds by fighting off hordes of enemies and defeating rival cult leaders leaders and followers and absorb their powers to increase your own power and assert your cult's dominance. Cult of the Lamb looks amazing. I absolutely love the design, the art style. I love the mixture of action, roguelike combat combined with the settlement elements. Um, I really enjoyed the demo and I'm very much looking forward to checking out this game this month. It is actually a title I am hoping to review on the channel and for those that are interested it is set for release on the 11th of August. The third game coming out this month is Spider-Man Remastered. In August PC gamers will finally be able to get their hands on Insomniac incredible Marvel's Spider-Man in all its remastered glory. This release will also include the main game as well as all three story DLC chapters set after the events of the main game which continue on Peter Parker's journey and offer new missions and challenges in the city that never sleeps. It is optimized for PC, so Spider-Man Remastered offers enhancements including unlocked frame rates, ray tracing and improved shadows and textures, as well as support for ultra-wide monitor support. It includes full mouse and keyboard support and controller support with the PlayStation DualSense controller, which also offers immersive haptic feedback and dynamic trigger effects. Marvel Spider-Man was one of my favorite exclusives on the PlayStation 4. I actually consider it to be one of the best Spider-Man games to ever have been released. 
It is an incredible game and if you have never been able to play it, if you don't own a PlayStation, then I end this game highly enough and it is finally coming to PC in August and it is set for release on the 12th of August for those that are interested. The fourth game coming out this month is Gloomwood. This is a stealth horror FPS indie title developed by New Blood Interactive. It follows a mysterious story in which you are abducted and left in a dark Victorian city consumed by an ancient curse. You must plan your survival and daring escape using nothing but stealth and an arsenal of eccentric weapons, including a very cool looking cane sword and also your wit in this haunting adventure inspired by games like Dishonored. Gloomwood is set for release on the 16th of August in early access and it looks interesting and if you're looking for a good stealth horror indie title, if you enjoy your first person stealth games like Dishonored, um, then I think Gloomwood may well be a title that you could well enjoy or be interested in. The fifth game coming out this month is Destroy All Humans 2 Reprobed. This is a remaster of the 2006 original. Of course, it's developed by Black Forest Games and it's the second installment in the Destroy All Humans franchise. The first game, which was remastered, few years ago actually did incredibly well so I'm really pleased to see the second title in the series get the same treatment. Crypto of course is back with a license to probe according to the developers. The Alien Invaders return groovier than ever. The game is set in the swinging 60s in all its chemical induced glory and ultimately Crypto will be taking revenge on the KGB for blowing up your mothership. In the second title, you will also get to invite a friend over for two-player co-op and actually enjoy the full story in local split-screen co-op, which sounds awesome. I actually played a little bit of the demo for Destroy All Humans 2. Really enjoyed the writing and the gameplay. I actually haven't played any of the Destroy All Humans titles, but I'm very interested and I do love the setting and I do love the writing and it is set for release on the 20th of August. The sixth title coming out this month is Midnight Fight Express. This is a high intensity 3D brawler. The title is developed mostly by one man called Jacob Duinel. I think I totally butchered that, but that's incredibly impressive given how well polished this game is. It's of course published by Humble Games and the basic premise is you play a former member of the criminal underworld that is pulled back into the life by a mysterious drone, claiming that, that you have until sunrise to fight your way across the city to prevent a citywide criminal takeover. The combat is brutal, frantic, awesome. The animations in this game, it, it very much feels a little bit like Sifu, but not as refined and, and slow paced as that. It is fast paced, it is frenetic, it is fun. It is from a top down perspective, but I played the demo of this during the Summer Game Fest and I really, really enjoyed it. So if you are looking for a fun 3D, brawler um, then I think Midnight Fight Express may well be a game that could very well interest you and it is set for release on the 22nd of August. The seventh game coming out this month is Saints Row. This is a reboot of the Saints Row series developed by Volition and published by Deep Silver. It is set in the fictional city of Santo Leso uh, located in the American Southwest and based loosely on the city of Las Vegas. Uh, in a world rife with crime, a group of young friends embark on their own criminal venture as they rise to the top in their bid to become self-made. The developers promise a huge experience, in fact one of the biggest and best Saints Row's playgrounds ever created, that's what they're saying. It looks crazy, it looks fun. Of course, you know, as part of this huge sandbox locations, you could do side hustles, criminal ventures, and blockbuster missions as you shoot, drive, and wingsuit your way to the top. The game will also include a detailed character creator. They will be drop in and out cooperative multiplayer with a second player, with each player having their own boss character and progressing in their own missions while helping the host player. 
I haven't actually played any of the Saints Row games. I know a lot of people do enjoy them. This seems a little bit different, though, to the original Saints Row, and it seems to be uh, going in a kind of a new direction, a bigger open world. It feels more in line with, say, Grand Theft Auto. Um, but if you are looking for a decent, you know, hopefully fun sandbox open world game uh, that you can play, you know, with a friend, then Saints Row may well be something that interests you. And for those that are interested, it is set for release on the 23rd of August. And the final game coming out this month is Soul Hackers 2. This is an upcoming role playing game developed and published by Atlas. It is actually a sequel to Devil Summoner Soul Hackers. Soul Hackers 2 takes place in the 21st century and players will get to explore a supernatural RPG with stylish summoners and dark dangers lurking under the neon lights of a cyberpunk Japan. That sounds amazing. The story follows two supernatural ion uh, beings named Ringo and Figue, maybe, uh, who descend into the human world from their birthplace in the data stream of information in order to avert a cataclysmic event that they predict will doom all of humanity. Soul Hackers 2 is actually a turn-based RPG that features a battle system similar to the system featured in the mainline Shin Megami Tensei games. You will be able to amass demons and unlock fusion combinations to create new stronger demon allies using their lethal abilities to uh, for incredible assaults on your foes so that sounds a little bit like persona as well you can strengthen the bonds with your teammates and dive deeper into their souls reliving their last adventures and discovering the truth of their stories and as well as your own so Soul Hackers feels like maybe a cross between Shin Megami Tensei and Persona. Um, I love the setting. It looks really interesting. I am very much, you know, enjoying the aesthetic and the style. It looks very cool. And Soul Hackers 2 is actually set for release on the 26th of August across all of the consoles as well as PC uh, for those that are interested. So there you have it. There are just eight of the biggest games coming out in August 2020. There are a couple on here that look interesting. Uh, let me know in the comment section which of these games you are interested in. If there are any games I have missed on this list, please do share those in the comment section below as well. And uh, maybe, you know, there are some games coming out this month that I haven't mentioned that are worth mentioning. Please do share those. Let me know what games you're going to be picking up and playing this month uh, in August. But I hope you guys found this video useful, interesting, and informative. If you did, please please remember to support the channel by liking, commenting, and subscribing. It really does help, so please do show your support by doing that. Anyway, hope you guys have a great week, of course. Take care, and as always, happy gaming. Bye, guys.